Shopify abandoned checkout recovery with Go High Level using voicemail drops as well as conversational SMS and email automation. That's exactly what I'm going to be covering step by step in this free course that's beginner friendly. This strategy is what I actually showed one year ago in this video that I posted to my YouTube channel, and it was responsible for recovering nearly $67,000 of abandoned checkouts in a single month with nearly a 7% conversion rate. Let's dive right in. Whether you're setting this up for yourself or for a client, the first thing that you need is a Go High Level account. Now, you can get a 14 day free trial if you sign up on their website, but if you actually go through my affiliate link, you can get an extended 30 day free trial. There were some links where you had to be on the most expensive plan to actually get the 30 day free trial. It's something like 497 per month. But if you do use my link, full disclosure, I do get a kickback, but I hope you get enough value from this video that you use my link. You can actually use the $97 per month plan. That's gonna give you all the features that you need to do what I'm going to cover in this video. And you're also going to get this 30 day free trial. I have a, a Go High Level account for my business. I also have a separate Go High Level account that my client actually signed up for for his business. But just so I leave no stone left unturned, I did just go ahead and sign up for a new account. So you'll just wanna click on 30 day free trial under the $97 per month plan. And then once you sign up, you'll be granted with this onboarding or welcome flow. Now, if you already have an account, you can skip forward just a little bit to where I'm actually creating the sub account. I'm sure you're familiar with that. But if you did just sign up, you'll need to tell High Level about your business. So just simply fill out this form. Once you filled out that survey, hit next. I'm gonna skip this step because it looks like Shopify isn't listed under that integration area. And we should get taken into the account. Let's see here. Looks like it's doing two-factor authentication. So I do need to go ahead and get this code. I just got the verification code. For whatever reason, it was showing up in a weird folder of my inbox. So be sure to check your junk spam newsletter and like promotions tabs just to make sure you're not missing the email from high level with the verification code now they want me to enable sms verification as well so i'm going to go ahead and send this to myself i just received the code and i've input it here and now the account is almost ready i am not going to do this onboarding that they're recommending here this is actually good that i created a new account because this is all new from the last time that i set this up so i just want to shortcut you guys through all this so you can get the account set up the right way integrated with Shopify from day one without wasting any time or having to schedule a call. We'll just click on this not now take me to my account button that's in the bottom right hand corner of the page and then you'll want to set up your own account or first client so you'll just input that information here. One thing to note for the mobile slash business phone if you don't actually have a business phone number for your business, just use your personal cell phone or your client's personal cell phone. You are going to get set up with a business phone inside of High Level that we're gonna be using to send those text messages as well as the voicemail drops. So don't stress on that. And then for the website field, you do have to enter HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash for it to be in the correct format. Once you've done that, just click on create. Not sure why it was showing invalid URL, but this is actually now creating the sub account. Now, if you already have a High Level account, you'll just want to come into your agency dashboard and then go to sub accounts and you'll want to create a new sub account for your Shopify store or for your client Shopify store. So to do that, you'll just want to click on add sub account and then just choose blank snapshot. I will be giving a snapshot away for free that has everything that I cover in this course. That way you can import it into your account. But I strongly encourage you guys to follow along step by step with this video so you're familiar with high level, especially if you're new and you know exactly how this stuff is working and how to set it up for your business. So I'll click on blank snapshot. And then here, since we're setting this up for a Shopify e-commerce business, there most likely isn't a physical location. So you won't want to search here and find a physical location on the map. You'll just wanna click on add account manually and and then you will just want to fill out this information here and that will create the snapshot for you. When it comes to choosing the business niche, there is a ton of categories here. So just type like three characters related to the business and try to find the most relevant category that's related to the products or service that you guys offer. Fill out this form and then click on save. Now that you have your sub account created, we wanna go into the agency view and we wanna go into settings just to make sure that we're using the correct phone and email settings. So first let's go to phone integration here 
and we're going to use Lead Connector or LC phone system. Don't use Twilio, that's just gonna make the process even more complicated. So just click Use LC phone system here, and then click this Acknowledge checkbox and click Confirm. Now, once you've done that, it's going to automatically link a phone for each new sub account, and I would recommend that you leave this setting turned on. That way you don't have to manually turn on LC phone system for every single sub account that you create for other e-commerce clients or for other e-commerce stores in your portfolio. Now let's go into email services. If you just signed up, you'll see this pop up, but if you already had your account, you wanna make sure that you create a dedicated domain. And then for the domain name, I would just recommend putting LC at the beginning and then your domain that you already have for your store. So for me, I'm gonna be setting this up for rstkd.com. So I'm just gonna put lc.rstkd.com and then I'm gonna click on add and verify. And this will give me some records to add into my domain. To add the DNS records, I'm actually gonna do it manually. You can just click continue and select the host that you have, whether it's GoDaddy or Namecheap or whatever website that you have that has your DNS records. But like I said, I'm just gonna click add record manually and then I'm gonna copy and paste these over to my GoDaddy DNS. Now I'm just gonna click on add new record. Now if you use GoDaddy, one thing that's gonna help save you a lot of time is actually click add more records and add all four of them in one shot and then click save all records. If you add them one at a time, you're gonna have to add your two-factor verification code every single time if you have two-factor turned on for your account, which I encourage you to do for security. So what I'm gonna do is just copy and paste these over. So the first one is a text record. I'm just gonna select TXT. I'm gonna paste this value here, then grab this, I should say paste this name here, and then paste this value here. Now for the TTL, just leave this at the default value that's the shortest, and then just go on to the next one. So the next one is also a TXT record, so I'm just gonna copy that and paste it over here, and then the same for this value. I'll leave that the same. The next one then is a C name, so I'll just copy that. I'm gonna select C name paste the value there, then paste this here. And then it looks like we actually have two MX records. So I wanna click add more, and then I'll just select MX and select MX here. And then I'll just, both of these are LC, LC. So I'll copy that, LC, LC, whoops, wrong thing, wrong tab. And then I'll just copy this. This most likely has the priority and everything in one value. So let's see if I paste it here, MXA, looks like it doesn't have it listed. I would just set the priority to zero in one. So put this to zero, put this to one, and then you'll just grab the next value here and paste that there. And I'll just click on save all records. It's gonna ask me for my two-factor verification, so I have to click on continue and verify. So let me just copy that, paste it here. There we go, and all of the records are now added. So I'm just quickly gonna double check the type. I wanna look for the MX records because those are a little weird, the LC ones. So priority of zero and one is okay. These are 10, 20, and 50, so there's no conflict there. I'm not sure if these were set to zero and one if you would have an issue. I don't really think the priority matters because high level's not mentioning it here for these MX records. So I'll just click on verify. This may take some time. It looks like the first one, the TXT that I added first is already verified, but these other ones are not verified yet. So. Let me actually, it looks like there's DMARC as well. This one wasn't showing. I would encourage you to set up DMARC also. That way you don't end up in spam. So I'm gonna grab this and add it also. So I'll just add a new text record. I'll copy this, which is the host name. I know I've been saying value for both, but the first one is actually the name and then value goes in the value box. So sorry if I created some confusion there. If you have any questions, comment down below. I'll clear up anything uh, where I misspoke or any questions you have. So I'll just copy this and then I'll paste it here. TTL, I'll leave the same and they all should be added. Now we'll just want to go into the phone integration settings at the agency level, and you'll want to click this blue link icon here. Once you click that, it's gonna link the phone number to the sub account, and then it's going to be fully managed by LC Phone. Next, you'll wanna click on the pencil icon, and you'll want to enable this setting to validate phone numbers when the contact is created. That way you're not trying to text numbers that are just spam, that people just typed an incorrect number that doesn't even exist. So choose this, and now what we're gonna do is go into the specific sub account. So I'll just click here, go into the sub account. We previously were at the agency account level, and now we're going into the sub account. Now that we're in the sub account, we wanna click on settings here, and we wanna go into phone numbers. And this should give us the option to customize all of the phone settings. Currently you'll have no number here, but you'll just wanna click on add number. 
and then you'll click on add phone number. Once you click that, you can decide what area code you want to use. So there's a bunch that are showing in California for me right now, but you can go through and filter this for different countries. I think there's actually a way to do it for state as well. Yeah, so here you can do digits or phrases. I'm just gonna click any number, but what you'll wanna do is actually choose a phone number that's in the area code of your business. But like I said, I'm just gonna pick a random number here. I'm not gonna worry too much about the area code. So now you can just scroll through this list here. You'll have both toll-free and local numbers. Now the toll-free ones are gonna be a little bit more expensive, but they most likely are going to have higher deliverability. So I'm just gonna go ahead and choose one of the toll-free numbers. Let's go with this one, it looks good to me. And then you'll just click on proceed to buy. Once you've purchased the number, this pop-up will appear and you'll have to verify the toll-free number. You'll also have to do the same for local numbers, I believe. So I'm just gonna click on verify this toll-free number and then you'll want to fill this out with all of your legal business information. I will put a link down below to a help doc from Go High Level that walks you through what to put here. But basically you just wanna put your legal entity, your personal information, and go through this to verify your phone number so you can send SMS. Once you filled out your personal information, you will need to fill out this last step, which is messaging use case. Basically all this stuff is around AUP 10 DLC. It's new regulation that's in enforced by the carriers just to make sure that there's not spam happening on the network. For a monthly volume, you just want to put based on how many abandoned checkouts you're going to be sending a text to. And maybe we're gonna be sending two or three messages per abandoned checkout. So I would say to overestimate this rather than underestimate it. So let's say you get 100 abandoned checkouts per month, for example, you're gonna send three messages, then you'd be sending 300 SMS per month. So just go into your Shopify store, see how many abandoned checkouts you get in a month, and then select that number times like three. So I'll just go ahead and select 1,000 here for the monthly volume. And then for the opt-in type, I would just put web form, and then for use case, I would select marketing as well as delivery notifications. Let's see if there's any other that apply. Account notifications, think that will be good for our use case. Now for the opt-in workflow URL, since we don't actually have like a form built out inside of high level, the opt-in is gonna be happening inside of Shopify checkout. So what we'll do is actually just go to your Shopify store. You don't wanna go to the admin area, you wanna go to the front end where the customers could see, and then you'll just add a product to the cart. So there's this really expensive, extremely rare pair of sunglasses here. I'm gonna add it to cart and then I'm going to check out, and then I'm going to select this option here for text me with news and offers. And I'm gonna take a screenshot of this because this is what we're actually going to provide to, to high level. Let's just take a screenshot of this. And then I believe we do actually have to put, uh, it looks like it has to be an image URL. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just duplicate this tab and I'm going to go into the files area of high level so I can upload that screenshot and then provide that to them there. Go back, go into media storage, click on okay, and then click on new upload here and then upload a file from your computer or I believe you can drag and drop it to this as well. On my other screen, I'm just grabbing that screenshot and dragging it up here and you just drop it into the page and it will upload. So now I have that screenshot inside of high level and I can click on get link. That way I have that link to provide on this form. So I'll put provide that here. So I just provided a use case description as well as message content. I'll provide templates of this down below in the YouTube video. Obviously I'll remove the, the name John as well as my name and my business name. I'll just put them with variables for you to replace. Don't put my information, make sure it's your business information. That way you get approved when you submit this form. Next, you'll just click on agree to the terms of service and then you'll just send this information for verification and this verification will take a couple days. Now, this red banner is really annoying me, so I'm actually gonna go in here and just click on resolve. That way I can fill this out as well. If you provide your tax information to, to high level, you'll actually be able to save on the taxes that they're gonna charge you. To add your tax information, you'll just click on this pencil icon here, and then you will search through this to select your country. So for the United States, it's gonna be USEIN, and then you'll enter your company's employer identification number if you have one. If you don't have it, you can select this option and just click on save. So I'll actually go ahead and do that for now, just because I don't wanna type my EIN on screen and share it with all of you on YouTube, and it's just gonna be one more thing that I have to blur in post.
There we go, we're good to go. And then now what you want to do is go into your email settings just to see if your DNS records are fully verified. So I'll go into email services again. If you still have the tab open, you can go there, but if you closed it, you'll just go to email services and then you'll click on dedicated domain over here in the top right. And here is where you can actually see if it's verified. So just click on verify domain. This will load and double check all of your records. If some of these don't show verified, you can just click on verify domain and they should all be green. Now, if they're not, then you just will want to go into your DNS provider and double check that you actually have added all of them. Maybe refresh your GoDaddy or your Namecheap DNS settings or Cloudflare if you're using Cloudflare. Refresh the page and check one by one that the records are indeed saved here. If some of them didn't get saved, just add them again. Make sure to save them correctly inside of your hosting provider and then go back to high level and just check again under the verification section that everything is verified. Once you've done that, an SSL certificate will also be issued and you'll be given a shared IP. Now, I believe there also is a way to add a dedicated IP address to your account to further improve deliverability, but you do actually have to warm up that IP. And more frequently than not, those dedicated IP addresses are actually sold out from high level. So you are actually good to go with the shared IP as long as it's active and your SSL certificate has been issued. And with that, that is it for the first part of this course. So if you do have any questions, if you get stuck along the way at any point, don't hesitate to comment down below your question. I'm here to help. I'll reply to you. I'll be as active as I can in the comments, getting back to you and providing as much help as possible. In the next video, I'm actually going to cover the high level account build out. So we're going to build out the pipeline and the opportunity stages, as well as integrating Shopify with Go High Level through a custom app inside your Shopify store. So if you did enjoy this, be sure to smash thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next one. Bye-bye for now.